I have a parrot in my hair, and I also have a theory that fixed states are causing technical debt, and that the problem has not gone away just because we've shortened our timeline from years to quarters or months. So when we look at traditional kind of waterfall phasing, it's pretty clear where a lot of our quality compromises were coming from. So we'd start out with this planning phase, we'd come up with this date when we thought we could deliver, and then we do a bunch of analysis and design, and normally that stuff would take longer than we thought, and we'd get going with build because we couldn't wait, and build would take longer because of variability and because it's complex and because there were dependencies we didn't account for. Things would get messy, but we still have this date we're marching towards, and then we would shortcut on quality, shortcut on testing, shortcut on automation, whatever we could do to get things out the door. And why did we do that? Nobody likes it, nobody wanted to, but you end up doing it because there's other projects waiting in line behind it. If we extend this date, it's gonna have a knock-on effect for all of the other things we've slotted next. We do it because we've been told that our goals are to deliver on time and on budget. And even though there's perfectly valid reasons why we didn't, we look like we're bad managers and bad planners because we didn't account for it. We do it because it's really, really, really scary to tell someone that is superior to you uh, in your organization that you're not gonna be able to do something that they want you to do. And uh, it could jeopardize your bonus, it could jeopardize that promotion, and we definitely don't wanna do it towards the end of the year when our comp is being decided, which is where a lot of projects go awry. So we know all this, that's why we're talking about working in iterations, why we're trying to get off of the old waterfall phasing. And there's a problem, we're doing it again, and now we're doing it with quarterly planning or quarterly big room planning. Uh, by pre-assigning work into sprints, by having these same kinds of um, inflexible goals and things assigned on a quarterly basis, we're rebuilding the exact same structures that got us here. I'm even seeing it inside sprints. So if we say that the sprint scope that teams have committed to is non-negotiable, which breaks invest, right? So that end and invest is negotiable. Um, if we say they're non-negotiable, that teams must make them, or if we put so much pressure on them through metricing and through goals and through management pressure, that it feels that way, what will happen is inside the sprint, the same thing will happen that was happening inside that big iteration. We will get towards the end of the sprint. We will see that we are not gonna make our goal and it's not an option not to do so because we have other work piled up behind us planned for future sprints and assigned to us. So what do we do? Well, we figure out how to make the goal. So we cut corners on quality. We simplify what we are gonna do. We do not automate. We manually test because it's always faster the first time. We push that stuff out the door. Fixed dates, uh, especially in Kanban, the, there's a class of service for fixed dates and they're there because there are some things that have a fixed date. If we do not make this date, the government is going to kick us out of business and revoke our license. If we do not make this date, Y2K is gonna happen and all of our systems are gonna shut down. There are things that really have a fixed date component to them. The risk is high of missing that date. Those things are rare. We are treating every piece of work that comes into our system as though it is fixed date because we have set up massive pressure to push work in. If we are pre-planning sprints, if we are committing to these goals on a quarterly basis, and we are putting pressure to shove more work in behind them, well, knowing that that pressure is there will force us now to try to rush to done as fast as possible, often by cutting corners. That's something that you can do in a really mature, healthy company. But if you have a company with a tendency towards dysfunction, a tendency towards low quality, towards avoiding automation, that is a big temptation. Instead, I suggest companies, especially those of you in transition away from old bad waterfall habits, to avoid as much pre-planning as you can. Have options, have problems you wanna work on, but nothing slotted any farther than you must. So if that means you plan day by day, please plan day by day. If that means that you have a backlog of work with no dates on it and they're just in priority order and you pull them whenever the previous one is done, awesome. Whatever you can do to protect yourselves from dependencies, uh, if that means splitting your stories around dependencies and finding ways to use service mocking to pretend your interface partner's there so that you can deliver independently, if that means feature toggling so that you can release without having to wait for a partner to be done uh, and you can decouple yourselves from that so you don't have to plan, please try it. Planning in quarters or weeks with these fixed date mindsets is just as bad as planning in years with projects. Let's not remake the same old mistakes.